So if any of you can't hear me while I'm talking into my computer, please let me know and I'll speak more loudly or s more slowly um, to make sure everyone captures what I have to say. I won't be telling you about every stage of the workflow that Melissa pointed out, but I'll take it from the point of uh, having the images, running them through the OCR software, and then using Salix as a means of parsing the OCR text and how well each of those work. So as Melissa mentioned, we use, uh, at New York, a version of Abbey Fine Reader 11 Corporate Edition. Again, as she mentioned, it's proprietary and not free. Um, but sometimes you get what you pay for, so it, it works a little bit better than some of the free engines do. Uh, and it runs usually between 300 and 400 US dollars. So when you're thinking about the, the pipeline or the, the, the movement of your images from the camera to a computer, and then from that computer through the OCR software, I like to organize my folder structure to help me know um, where images or files need to go next. So my images will come in from being processed as JPEGs and put into a folder that is to be OCR'd. Um, you might want to, as Melissa said, crop to the label to help speed up the, processes, the processing of the OCR engine because it, it looks at all of the information in that image as data it needs to, to search through to find the text. So if you have a very small image, it's less data to have to process. Likewise, you remove all of the information that's text also on the sheet, but that isn't informative for the collection label, that isn't a part of the collection label. So to show you how Abby would work, this version, the, the corporate edition, has two means of processing images through the engine. One is manually, you ask it to open several files at a time, or you uh, put the files into a folder and tell Abby where to find those image files in that folder all the time, and then batch process those images through the OCR engine. So there's one that involves the human in the loop a little more than the other. So I'll show you first the, what Abby calls the hot folder, which is the batch processing folder. So the first thing you would do after having a, a folder of images is create a new, what they call a new task. So, oops, let's go, uh, new task. So in the Abby hot folder, you can tell it, you can tell Abby to run uh, at a certain time in the day, you can have it running overnight, or you can have it start right now and do it only once. So in this case, we'll have it run once. But here you can tell it to do every minute, every day, every week. So if you know you'll have images, enough images at the end of your week to run, have it run over the weekend, because it does occupy a lot of processing power from your computer. Um, so you may want to leave it running overnight or over the weekend, especially if you have many images to process at once. But in this case, we'll run it once. So we'll name it uh, data capture course. And then you pick a start time. You can have it start at night if you like. And then you tell Abby where to find the image, where to find the images. So I'll browse to my place that doesn't move on my computer, which in this case is the Abby OCR demo. So I have images to OCR. I select that. It's asking me what kinds of files are in that folder. Well, I know they're all image files, but just in case you want to OCR a, a PDF or any other type of document, you can select all files. As Melissa mentioned, we want to create a text file for every one of those specimens, so we will select create a separate document for each file. And each one has its own formatting style. We all know labels depending on the collector, look very different. Although there is some regular structure to herbarium labels, for example, every collector has its own style, or every institution. Another thing with related to the movement of those images, a guarantee that I will know those images have been run through the OCR engine is to ask the OCR engine, once you've processed these, please put these images here. So I tell it to move the images to the images OCR done folder. And once I've 
told it where to find the images and where to put the images when it's done. I want to tell it how to analyze each one of those images. And in the case of Abby, it does really well with the auto-select languages, as Melissa said. Um, it, if, you, if you know you're only working through French labels, then you can select French. Um, but for us, we, we run a mixed bag of, of language types, so we select auto-select. Um, and automatically analyze areas, and analyze and read. So the an it'll analyze it and not read the text within the image. So what we want it to read it as well. And then finally, you ask it to save the output or the text files. It gives you a number of different formats into which you could save your text files. For us, we like to save as a text file in the true sense. So I would select text. And then to the right of that, I have the option to make some uh, customization or some special, ask it to do some special things regarding that text. So I can ask it to keep the format of the label. So if something's a header or there's a paragraph space between two paragraphs, then I can ask it to retain that spacing. Um, if you're going to import these text files into an Excel spreadsheet, for example, you may want to not um, keep line breaks and not use blank lines as paragraph separators. Uh, because it fills your spreadsheet with space and it's just uh, and it, it's more difficult to parse if you actually wanted to parse the text in bulk but I, I won't go into that today so suffice to say um, you have some options and then as John mentioned a couple of days ago you can tell it how to encode the data and in my case I'd like to encode it as UTF-8 <coughs> So once I've told it that, I tell it where I want to save the text files. So in my Abbey demo folder, I have here a folder for all the batch text files. And I say, OK. It asks me what kind of file names I want to create. I want to use the same files as the same file name structure as the images are named. I want that barcode as the, as the text file name. You could customize it if you like, but I don't want to. And you can also, at this same moment, opt to save another output type for these same images. So if you also want to create um, a PDF document of each label, you can do that too. So with that, I'll make one text file per image, and I'll set it to start. And you'll see here that my task is running. Depending on the number of images, and the size of those images, it may take anywhere from a couple of minutes to several hours. So be prepared. And if, if I show you my task manager, you can see, where is it? Well, Firefox is consuming a lot. Here, it's occupying a lot of processing power. So be aware of that if you're trying to run other programs at the same time but it is meant to run in the background. So if you have a, a powerful enough computer, it shouldn't be a problem. So as I mentioned earlier, the other option is to, to process the images through OCR manually, in which case I'd select open. And it automatically navigates to the folder that I last opened, which in this case is images to OCR again. So I want to image, I'm going to do just a couple as a test here, so I can select specific images or, or open all of them. And it opens each one, it scans it, and it reads the information. It always provides me with these errors, regardless of the resolution at which I've saved the images, so I can ignore that. <laughs> I know it doesn't make a difference. And we've actually asked the people at Abbey about that and they don't really know either but as long as it does no harm it's okay and then it's done so if you should scan or run through the software full image sheets which might save you some time when you're doing it manually you can see here in red everything that the software 
looked through and wasn't sure was text or not. And we know that this plant specimen isn't text, but it sees it as data, areas of high contrast. So we want to tell it, I don't want you to pay attention to this, I want you to pay attention to the label. So if you don't have another imaging software that allows you to crop to label, you can do it in here and run through each one at a time. Uh, it, it eliminates the option to batch, batch process, but you can um, do it fairly quickly here too. So I don't know if you, if you saw, I just clicked edit image and I move the square and crop to wherever there is the label. like so. And this isn't actually cropping the original image, it's just cropping it within Abbey. Crop and exit. And then I ask it to read again. Much faster, better output. So I'm going to zoom in here so you could see better what we're looking at. As Melissa mentioned, the OCR engines aren't really capable of distinguishing handwritten characters, though there are some programs and some people, there's a, a fellow in Germany who's been working for several years on trying to teach an OCR engine to read handwriting. Uh, and we're getting closer, but not there yet that we can implement it in a, in, at the scale that we need it. So to show you the image, relative to the output. Can everyone see that okay? I see here some characters highlighted and some that are not. And those that are not, the OCR engine is really confident that that's the correct character. But those that are highlighted, it's not sure. So if you were to place your cursor and move through the text, you'd see down here magnified the area of text that you're looking at and it highlights in yellow the character it is uncertain about or certain about. So in this case it's not sure if it's 2013 but I see here in the image of the label that it is so it's okay. I could go through and modify anything as necessary. And once you're happy with the results you move on to the next. It does even a fairly good job consistently of capturing the degree symbol in, in geographic coordinates um, and it does genuinely very well with newer typed labels. So if you have a relatively new collection or a set of specimens within your collection that are newer you might want to consider this. Here's an older label, it still did very well. So you'd want to go through and check to make sure that all the characters are correct if you're doing it this way. You could just export it all as is and do cleanup later. So once you're satisfied with the results, you select all the images and you save it. It's going to ask me how do I want to save it. I want to save it as a text file again. So I go here to text and I can tell it those specific characters again with, or specific qualities with regard to the text file keep line breaks, keep headers, footers, UTF-8. And I want it to stay formatted. And I want it to stay formatted in this case because that helps when processing it through Salix. So if you're not processing it through Salix, feel free to, to do away with the line breaks. And there. And if we go back to the hot folder, we see our process is completed. So I can now go to the folder on my desktop that has the text files. And I can see them here. In addition to the text files, it includes a log of how it ran through the images. So you can see here the time it, take, it, time it takes for each image, any problems it had in the process, the number of characters it had trouble with, the number of pages. So it's usually between 10 and 15 percent uncertain characters. So once I have that, I can also see in my Windows Explorer view here, it'll let me, I can see how each text file turned out. Not bad. So these are the batch processed. Here's one 
that had some text readable and some that turned out to be not readable, which is likely due to handwriting on the label. The OCR engine does not do a good job with labels that have any kind of underlines.